Today's video, I'm comparing between biomedical scientist and medical laboratory assistant in terms of skills, qualifications, career progression. So if you're interested in this field, whether you're starting or you just want to know about it, yeah, this video is... Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. Today's video, I am going to give you the comparison between biomedical scientist and medical laboratory assistant um, uh, to help you to understand more about their roles if you're applying for a position or you just want to know about it. So hopefully I'll be covering as much as possible. It's a quick comparison and also I'll be giving you my own insight on what is it like, how did it benefit me. So this is by far is my favorite um, video because um, I don't think... Um, I've seen information out there anyway even if there was information out there I want to give my insight and my own experience so I'll be sharing some slides which will give you comparison between MLAs and BMSs so at least you guys know what is it like and in terms of interviews etc which I'm going to talk about in upcoming videos in the last video we spoke about what MLAs do and everything so it's going to be similar now I've already spoke about biomedical scientists now I'm talking about the comparison between both of them because in the previous video I spoke about what MLAs MLAs do and before that I spoke about what biomedical scientists or BMSs do now I'm doing, going to do a comparison between both at least you have an overview on what is it like so for your own career progression so if you want to apply for um, a biomedical scientist or an MLA you know what is it like so the first thing I want to give you an overview of MLAs versus BMSs I started with MLAs for a reason uh, because the MLAs are responsible for um, their supporting they do the technical support they support us in terms of like I mentioned in the previous video they do the, um, the booking in the processing of the samples which we do uh, the follow-up work so they prepare the samples managing the equipment that they use uh, managing lab environments and they are essentially in the smooth running of diagnostic and research laboratories ensuring that specimens are ready for testing and the safety protocols are followed for biomedical scientists on the other hand it involves more the analysis and interpretation like i've mentioned previously and they perform tests on samples analyze the results we do the reporting and we contribute directly to the diagnosis and treatment of diseases so biomedical scientists our role is more uh, intense um, and we need to understand the processes of the test so in short MLAs, they handle the preparation and the support work, um, while BMSs ourselves, we perform the analysis and the testing. So both roles are crucial in terms of the responsibility and the specialization. So um, it's very, very important, like I mentioned in the previous video about the importance of the role of a medical laboratory assistant or let's say technicians. So if your work is not done properly, I'm not going to be interpreting you know, the right results or what you have, the work that you've done, and therefore the reporting will be wrong and the misdiagnosis of the patient and so on. So it's very important in that aspect. So that will lead me to the next section with education path. So the MLAs, they need a number of GCSEs or A-levels in science-related subjects, vocational qualifications in healthcare or science, and it involves on-job training. For BMSs or biomedical scientists, you need a biomedical science degree that is accredited by the IBMS. I've spoke about in a previous video on the whole roots about it. And then you need to complete the IBMS registration training portfolio and the HCPC registration. So normally you become an MLA and then you, if you've already got the degree or gained the degree, you will progress into becoming um, a biomedical scientist. So that's the traditional route of um, how it becomes. So to become a biomedical scientist, you know, so you are an MLA, you don't need that many uh, certifications and you undergo on-job training. But for the biomedical scientist, obviously, as you know if you're in biomedical science you need a whole um, story or a dedication in terms of um, in terms of uh, become state registered because there's many reasons obviously as you know um, but again the experience of MLA is not uh, something to to underestimate it so yeah that's how it is in terms of um, the qualifications and education um, I don't know if I should mention about the skills I'm gonna talk about the skills as an overall um, in um, in a minute. Let's talk about the salary expectation. I'm not sure when you're watching this video but that's 
at the moment, at this time of recording this video, and that applies to the previous video. So for the MLAs, that's the, the it ranges, um, there's an entry level and there's an experience level. Uh, for the BMSs as well, but I was really shocked about the previous video when it can go up to 40 uh, for the MLA So I'm not sure if that's um, if that's applicable in the UK um, Again, correct me guys comment in the sections and let me know um, if there's anything that I made mistake in terms of career progression both paths of offer growth so for BMS uh, generally it's more opportunities to advance into becoming um, you specializing in a particular discipline such as infection science or microbiology you can move into management you can even move into research positions but for MLAs um, it's an excellent way to gain experience or to enter the field um, and then all the way up to becoming a biomedical scientist or if you choose further to um, further education also um, some MLAs I've seen like I mentioned the previous video they can move into managing um, team leading uh, or even becoming a manager of the specimen reception that's what I have observed I'm not sure if that's accurate but this is again anything I share here is based on my own experience so correct me if, if I made a mistake here and there in terms of skills for um, comparing BMS's and, and uh, MLA's I've already shared one last week uh, or the last video on how is the skill set for the MLAs so I've put both slides slides for you and if you notice they are very similar they are in, there is common uh, they are very common in terms of the soft skills and technical skills communication skills etc etc so they, they are very similar and also I like I always like to um, relate them to the future skills that we, um, that puts us a, as an advantage compared to um, other professionals so looking at that they I think in terms of skills they're both similar they, they you know there is a, um, a great uh, way in terms of developing those skills and highlighting those skills uh, depending what walk of life you will um, walk eventually so um, it's really good in terms of um, progression I, I'm a big fan of that and I really think that helped me in my own pro career progression so in terms of interviews or things like that highlight those skills um, you know that's why I'm sharing as much information for you guys so that you appreciate if you are applying for um, jobs or you want to expand or you want to move into other you know other careers these are the skill sets that you already have and this is what you've done highlight those in your CV when you applying for jobs or covering letter which is my least favorite task I will always say that <laughs> I don't know if that's gonna put me at, at disadvantage but yeah so now we move into the next section which is the work-life balance they're very similar as I said for the MLAs in the last video um, it's gonna be shift work weekend work etc however for MLAs it's different in a way because it's predictable yeah the worst that can be you um, you might swap a shift or you might uh, stay behind that's all I have I've observed but for BMS is because because you are responsible for a bench um, or something can happen uh, you're more likely to um, you know have a bit of an irregular shift say if somebody is off sick and you were supposed to be on a certain bench you might move into that other bench so that in in terms of um, engaging work and all that it that does um, happen um, so you can stay late as a BMS um, you can uh, help in other benches or uh, even change bench so that can happen because you are responsible um, for um, your, your the bench or the results or the work that you are doing so they vary in that, that way in terms of professional development like I said for the MLAs the certification and then you can trans transit into um, becoming a biomedical scientist or move into other roles if you want um, for biomedical scientists it's um, you specialize or, or you advance uh, by doing um, specialist diploma or masters or even PhD um, that doesn't mean MLAs can't progress they might change career altogether and say they want to do PhD or do masters in ad any other discipline even if, I, if they don't qualify in a biomedical scientist so in terms of professional development they're both very promising so I wouldn't um, underestimate that at all and um, they benefit you uh, in the long run once you appreciate your skills once you appreciate 
what you you know what you have then it's it's the world is your oyster as they say let me elaborate more about the professional development because um, unfortunately people think if you're an MLA you don't have room for progression you can't do that so I want to elaborate on that and I've noticed that as well and um, there's loads of opportunities out there is how you look for those opportunities so both MLAs and BMS they have the opportunity for professional development um, even though their paths they look different but as an MLA you can pursue additional certification or attend conferences or be part of a, a research or you know or taking further education but I've seen some MLAs they've traveled they've attended conferences they've taken part in poster presentation etc so um it's very very interesting how to see and the same applies for biomedical scientists they they can um have that um that opportunity but really really i really want to highlight that regardless to what role you belong to you can progress have an open mind look at what way where are the opportunities if there's an opportunity for further training or further take part because you never know let's say let me give you an example if you've been to a conference for example in holland or whatever country you you travel to who is attended that conference who's at that conference say you've presented it you might get an opportunity to work you might get an opportunity to get trained in a big company you know that's why i i'm glad i did that when i started traveling i went to different conferences i started going to in dubai well, i'm going to share my experience i've looked for um, um healthcare conferences um and there's a book that i've read called um, the magic of thinking big that was the one of the books that changed my life and he said don't just think of progression within your field or connect with your field connect with outside your field so i go to conferences in business fashion <laughs> everything that you can think of not just science um economics i never learned about economics but then i started learning slowly and obviously with the technology you've got ai you've got you know so i own i don't focus on science so i've built connections in terms of, you know obviously linkedin is a fantastic platform but i've built so many connections once i started going out so take an opportunity if there's a conference that announced or there's a project that's take part of it don't just come to work and do the work believe me the amount of opportunities that you could be missing oh my god i cannot tell you how it's a lot of effort you you know but in other in in like i think in the nhs they give them time off like for example for me at this stage of my life my professional life i'm self employed so if there's a conference or whatever i i really make a plan I go and travel. I take time off and, and, and travel and go and do and do those things because I think I'm going to talk more about this because it benefits you a lot and you can get um, opportunities um, to speak, opportunities to take part, opportunities. some are paid, some are not paid, but you're building a portfolio and like I always say, you're creating your career. Eventually, you'll end up setting up your own thing. How? That will come with time. But don't miss any opportunity. Don't just come to work and do the work and that's it. Okay, you're going to retire. That's why people, when they retire, they really struggle because they don't know what to do because they only focused on work. Don't just focus on work. Focus on other things. What are your hobbies? For example, for me, I love writing. I love reading. I love talking. So I go to conferences. I do the networking. I started from scratch. I did my research and all that. Um, and then slowly I became, you know, I became a pro. I, I started speaking on stages. I started going places. I started, you know, I've been, I started to get invited to, uh, co to collaborate and things like that how did that start by taking those opportunities by exploring by going out so professional development doesn't just involve your career or your path it involves it's a whole package open your eyes i know people might say oh yeah but i've got family i'm supporting and all that dedicate very little time because you never know that connection can be a new opportunity for you maybe to set your own business or a, a better job with a better salary with uh, a better lifestyle uh, like i said now the lifestyle in this profession is very challenging for most of us it's very difficult that's why i went into self-employment because i couldn't keep up with that because i found it very difficult for me to manage my life it was very tiring uh, that's why i decided i'm gonna go into self-employment at least i can choose the hours I can, at least i can change jobs if i want to and now the way the job market is becoming is completely different now the rise of gig economy the rise of the creator economy you, you will you know you will stay in a job that's good but then are you happy in that job is it fitting your lifestyle yes it's putting food on the table but 
you know, people, I think after COVID, people really prioritize their lifestyle mostly. And I'm one of those people and I've spoke about it in my book as well. So um, that, that I will share that story in the near future. So this is my insight about professional development. And please take that constructively because truly what I'm seeing now, it's not going to get any easier. It's going to be very hard. Taxes are going to be higher. Salaries are not going to be as high as the inflation and all that. So you just have to have an open mind for new opportunities so yeah i just thought i'll give you that my insight about professional development and uh, it's something i'm working on at the moment which i'm going to share more about it in the future and um, the future of work the future of career how can you create career so there's few talks now which i'm going to talk about in the future but yeah stay tuned but yeah this is about the professional development my insight about whether you're an mla or bms this last slide i just want you to have a look at it and i always have it on to show you if you're an MLA and you want to become a BMS, this is the other opportunities that you can apply for in terms of professional development. Don't just focus on looking for a trainee. Look for the uh, MLA jobs or associate practitioners. These two, they will help you uh, in order to progress if you want to become a biomedical scientist. Don't focus on the trainee. And again, how you can apply for it. I've spoken in another video. Have a look at that video, being creative on how to apply for that. So I hope this video is, I wanted to do like a comparison between the MLAs and the BMSs for you to have a view on what is it like, the skill sets, uh, what's the pay is like, um, you know, the payment and all that. So, and the pro professional development and the lifestyle. So if you're interested in this, at least you have an idea of what is it like. Um, if you're already in there and you want to progress, you know what it's like. So if you notice both roles, um, it will help you to become progressing. So if you're looking for an entry role, at least now you know how it is as an MLA. We're going to talk about that on interview questions and all that. That will be in the next video um, on how you can prepare for the interviews, whether BMS or MLA, uh, the similarities of them. And again, in, in that aspect, Always bear in mind it's very subjective, it depends on the hospital, it depends on their needs, it depends on what type of person they're looking for. So if you ever applied for a position and you were not successful, maybe it's not you, maybe it's just what they're looking for, not necessarily you personally or your skills. Um, sometimes they have, I'm sorry to say, but sometimes they have their own agenda. Sometimes they have an internal position, but they just have to go through the whole thing. So there was positions when I applied for and I was like why am I not getting it but yeah eventually you know I got a job eventually I was grilled down but I got it so but now being self-employed I don't have to go through that you just um your CV speaks for you which is much easier and I think it applies for MLAs as well so even if you're an MLA and you can't get into it and you've got the experience apply for um locum do the private and um, you know do the um, locum which is equivalent to um self-employed just apply for that and build that experience and then you can get into another role it, it, again at the end of the day you want to work you want to put food on the table very important to have a salary so don't look at that just applying for the nhs yeah i know people want to, the perks of the nhs there's nothing wrong with that but if you're starting just start and then you can progress from there don't just have that one thing in your mind have a flexible mindset i hope this comparison has helped again bring you know let me know in the comment section if there's any more that you want me to elaborate on or if there's anything you want me to correct um just keep the conversation going because this channel is for you and um, to put as much information out there for you not just in biomedical science i'm looking beyond biomedical science beyond laboratory medicine I'm a believer of that you can create your career and this helps this can be helped by us communicating talking now I'm on, on the other end I'm progressing in my own way but again I don't like forgetting about the people who are just starting because I can see there's a lot of information out there but it's very overwhelming it's very difficult to simplify and put it out there for you guys that's what I'm trying to achieve here so again if I don't know what is needed if you don't tell me what you need I'm not going to be able to help you so I'm doing all of this from my own experience, my own observations and my own research. So keep that conversation going. Don't be a passive user. Let me know. Did you even benefit from it? If you did, hit the like button. I want this video to reach as many people as possible out there because... I still get loads of questions through my LinkedIn um, on the same questions. So I want this. I hope these videos will appear as much as possible to whoever might need it because the confusion still continues unfortunately for loads of students out there or even people who are looking to start their career so please 
hit the like button comment below and subscribe and hit the notification button so that you get the notification i wish you all the best and until next time keep shining keep inspiring and see you next time